I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is an athlete who needs no introduction. This is a very, very, very special guest. We have 14-time world champion, Olympic champion, international swimming league star, breaking American records like it's a party, and finesse athlete, Olivia Smoliga. Yes. Hello. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Hi, guys. We have to share the backstory of this podcast and why it's going live on uh, on Thanksgiving, because we were like normal folks. We were we were going to respect your time and your energy coming off uh, coming out of the bubble, and we we're gonna we we're gonna push to next week because we can honor you next week. But we did hear from a from a from mutual friend, John Mix, founder and CEO of Finis, and you are a Finis athlete. And he's like, hey, what's going on? Why aren't you having Olivia on? <laughs> So we had we had we had we had a text exchange, mm-hmm. and we just wanted to let you know, John, that we love you. <laughs> we love you, John. <laughs> we, we we do love you, and and we're doing this just for for you on Thanksgiving. So this is all for you, buddy. And you can also <laughs> go to finiseswim.com. Finiseswim.com. You might want to check out their smart goggles. Those things look legit. I'm gonna get me some. Have you tried them yet? I have not yet, um, but in my off time, I will. Uh, I don't want to get caught red-handed here. <laughs> well, this is all about ISL and and yes. and 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 you, and really a debrief on what happened. And it's uh, you know from the out, we we were there season one, and season one was just like wow. Yeah. Season two in the bubble, it was it was truly a bubble, and there wasn't media there, which was kind of cool because everybody could drop in and do zooms and. But it's, uh, you know, is what was the difference season one to season two in terms of like, you know, the, the atmosphere? Yeah, you know, it, it was really cool because like you said, it was a bubble. We're six weeks with the same people in the same hotel on the same island uh, with the same mindset all, all six weeks through. The difference, I think, for me was when we're able to travel back and forth last season to different venues, it kind of... Um, got you amped up emotionally because it's like, okay, you're stepping away and then you're going back and you're stepping away and you're going back. So here it was kind of like, especially like the third, fourth match, you were like, okay, you know, really get yourself up uh, to go. Obviously it wasn't hard because the atmosphere that they put on for ISL allows you to get amped and you know, you're vying for the trophy and all that. But the difference was that, yeah, you are, you're kind of stuck in the same mindset and you're not able to step away. So it was kind of like a crash course on being able to emotionally, mentally, physically be ready each match, like back to back to back. I don't think I've ever raced like that back to back to back ever. We're gonna, we, well, I, I, I made a huge mistake and I did not say that Coleman Hodges was on the podcast that Coleman Hodges, our favorite swim swam head of production is here with his mustache <laughs> and uh and and, and, I, and coleman's going to come in here and nerd it up this this is i promise this is my last question so i in talking to tom shields last year mm-hmm. and and i think it's fair to, to to share this tom's like i love the olympic games the olympic games are, are very important it is you know it is a it is a backdrop and foundation of of our sport he's like but i could just do the international swimming league and and be happy. I could be a pro swimmer on the international swimming league. Mm-hmm. And I would feel like I would leave the sport feeling like I'm satisfied. What's your take on it in, in, in comparison to the Olympic stage? Yeah. You know, we get asked that uh, often, right? Because this is the second season of the swim league. And um, of course the Olympics are the top of athletics. And when you think of swimming, it's really every four years. Um, I think there's been a lot more publicity, publicity around worlds, of course. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just been the Olympics. So now that you have this totally different league with ISL, it just gives a different flavor to the sport, in my opinion. Like it's, it's just really exciting. And although, you know, I agree with Tom that it is so sick and, you know, as I continue my professional career, I will want to keep doing ISL year after year after year until my body says no more 
I still, you know, respect the Olympics heavily. And, and that's always going to be on our mind as swimmers. Maybe, you know, in the next 10 years, something will change. Maybe in the next, I don't know. Um, but I think both having, having a, the opportunity to do both, especially being a American college swimmer, it is like that, but elevated and you're just with a team and you get to come together and just share the same beliefs, be on the same page and get inspired by your teammates similarly to how you are at the Olympics with your team USA uh, teammates. So both are extraordinary in their own right. So very diplomatic. What I, what I, what I what the takeaway from that, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I take my, I'll take my Olympic medals. I'll take my world, my, all my world titles and I'll take ISL. That's right. I want them all. And I want, and I want collegiate swimming. It sounds yeah, like I want you, it all. you need everything on your buffet. Yes. To, 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 okay. Got it. To get full. Yeah. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> Damn. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> so, so Olivia, I talked to you right at the beginning of quarantine. Um, and yeah. it was, it well, was how, a while. It was how many a, years ago was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was ages ago. Oh and my God. Uh, so coming into that first ISL match, how race physic, I guess, starting physically, how race ready did you feel? I mean, you know, had you done race prep at, at Georgia, at other pools you were training at, in Budapest at all? Um, what were you thinking? Yeah, I feel like I was so race ready. I mean, we just like shot out of a can in that first match. Emotionally speaking, it was like, wow, we're here. Like literally on my way there, I'm, I'm traveling with Melanie Margalis. And we're like, where we go? Or is this really happening? We couldn't even believe that we were about to take an international flight, about to go and do this because we were under the impression that nothing really was going to happen, that they weren't, wouldn't be able to make it happen. And obviously we're so thankful that they did. So the first match was crazy in terms of being race ready. Uh, definitely Jack uh, pumped the brakes a little bit for us before that first match, you know, getting accustomed to the time zone and flushing out the legs post travel, which we were really thankful for. Um, but in terms of race prep, the first race day that we had had in Georgia was the Saturday before we left for ISL. So we did four 75s off the blocks. Uh, myself, Mel, Kevin, uh, Natalie, you know, th those who went to ISL, that's what we did. Um, the, the other boys, uh, Matthias Koski, Jay Litherland, Chase Kalish, they had to do six ones off the blocks, which kind of <laughs> sucked. But um, that, that was the race prep that we did. But I think I mean, we were, I was at least, I don't know if I can speak for everyone, but I was at least so fired up upon arrival. You know, you're talking to this person, talking to this person, you know, you're just, your energy is everywhere and you're just getting so fired up because at the end of the day, when you're at this level, what you want to do is race, race, race. And we hadn't had that in so long. So we, like I said, shot out of a can in that first match, um, which was awesome. I literally shot at, not literally, it's a bad <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I shot out of a cannon, yeah. <laughs> uh, but kind of, because because first first race, 50 back, you break an American record, right? Ooh, um, yes. What, what, did, what did that do for you going forward? Just like, boom, oh, hey, best time, all right. <laughs> I know. So I didn't even know uh, that it was an American record when I swam it, uh, because it had been so <laughs> long since we had been in short course meters. I didn't even know my times before until I, you know, looked back at the results. And then I looked back at the last time I did short. So it was last year, ISL, even before that, when I had a lot of best times at short course world. So I was like comparing the two, I was like, oh, pretty sick. Um, but yeah, I think it was really just emotionally driven that first match. I mean, we, so the first event that I even had was um, the four by one free relay with the girls. And I went second and it was really cool. Cause I usually lead off and I remember getting up, uh, on the blocks and Pernilla Bloom like just dove in and my hands are like this. I'm like shaking as I'm about <laughs> to do my takeover. I mean, it was sick. I love it. I was like, I feel alive again, <laughs> you know, that adrenaline rush before the race. So um, that was awesome. Then right into a 50 free and then a little bit of break right into the 50 back. It was, it was amazing. Like for, for someone like myself with the events that I swim, ISL was tailored. I feel like for, uh, us although of course we do have got to give my respect to the four imers the four freestylers of course but um i mean it's really awesome when you're able to be on a, on a relay like that and just you know you're just scoring points you're constantly looking at the scoreboard and you're like 
hell yeah. Like, are we beating energy standard? Are we not? You know, it was really, it was, um, it fired you up for sure. Yeah. I wish that I was good enough to break an American record and not <laughs> know that I'd broken an American record. How about, how about you, Coleman? You wish you were so good that you could break, break an American record and be like, oh, I didn't know I broke an American record. <laughs> that was Sorry. never on my radar. <laughs> This is, this is, I've got to be honest with you. Never, mm. never heard that before, but it's pretty awesome. Thanks. You guys, I just, for, you know, I wasn't aware of my times. Short course meters. I'm, I'm American. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a weird course and that's kind of the, one of the benefits, right? It's just like, yeah. you just go out there and swim. So yeah. like you said, what, like it's the adrenaline rush, the emotional rush is so huge. And, you know, through those six weeks, you have to kind of learn to manage that after yeah. that first match. What, especially for you guys defeating energy, you know, just right out of the gate, yeah. taking down the defending <laughs> champs. Like, how do you, how do you reel that back in? How did you learn to kind of manage that throughout? Yeah. So it, I feel like it was a learning process for me for the, like three weeks. Cause it was just a lot of this, like up and down um, emotionally. So after, you know, fresh out of the gate with energy, it was awesome um, because we we're like, wow. The, the like they were just at a training camp you know they were they're always primed and race ready so that was kind of you know pat yourself on the back for that one um but then i mean we went right into just normal training we went had we had normal like two weeks of workouts for that second and third match we had a, like an eight day break i think before the third match mm -hmm. two days off and then the fourth match so that was the hardest for me personally, because it was just like, okay, I know I have to get fired up. We obviously want to score these points. Um, we're wanting to go to semifinals. I mean, obviously like obvious thoughts through your head. Um, but yeah, definitely like learning how to reel it in and learning to control that adrenaline. I think it was a misstep of mine because it was like that third or fourth match and I was getting that, those butterflies, you know, before we went out to swim and I was like, all right, chill, chill, chill. Like this isn't, you know, where you really need to have it. You know, you want to have it for semis and hopefully finals. So try to reel it in. And I don't know why I did that. I should have just embraced it all um, at the time because after each match, you, know, you turn off, the, turn on the on, turn uh, the off switch on. And um, <laughs> I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then you're just in practice mode and you're in relax mode. And, um, but it was, it was really cool because I feel like I learned, like I said, it was a crash course in learning that, like you really had to just bounce back. It was no like, okay, now I get to go to my home base and be in my comfortable zone. Like you had to make it happen, uh, while you were there, you know, without your head coach, without your team. Well, I had a lot of my teammates there, but you know, for most, they didn't have their teammates there. You're in a foreign country and you really have to like, um, make it work with what you have. And it was really cool to just like learn, uh, even, in, even as much as I've been swimming, it was like totally different experience. Never been in a bubble, never been in a bubble. So I've, I'm, you know, Coleman's been covering this very closely and I, and I, and you can, he can, he can scold me at this question has been asked a whole lot. No, What's the right. hardest practice that you did? in the bubble. Do you ask this a lot? You ask uh, this no. a lot. Look at me. She's not. Yeah. I asked this. No, oh, no I want to hear it. I want to hear it. No, no, please answer. <laughs> okay. So it was uh, so the first week, like I said, Jack pumped the brakes for us before the first match. Then after the second match that Monday, yeah. And we just got that oh. Georgia threshold long course love. I'm like, dude, like we have to race. Like, come on, you know, we're, uh, we got a trophy on the lot, you know, but no, it was nothing like that. So we did, we did threshold that Monday. The next day we did fast, easy. These were all long course. We had long course, long course, long course, long course, long course, long course. And then um, uh, what did we, what do we do the next? Then we had like a pace day. We had KDS, kick drill swim, which is a, you know, that was that 50 set, 1650s like that uh, two days before either the third or fourth match. And I like look up at my coach. I'm like, okay, so is this going to be like, 200 pace for the first round, you know, like plus two, right. Then plus one, then at, and then under. And he's like, no, they're all max. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? But I mean, it is what it is. We had been doing hard practices in Georgia. We did that, you know, uh, off the blocks 
475s fast, which were great. And I was like, oh, we're fired up. Like if the first match was like this after having, you know, months of just consistent training, like oh, this taper is going to feel good. We're going to be fine. So I didn't mind doing that. But after that, like pretty nice, easy week, I was like, what the hell is this? But yeah, it was kind of, uh, but no, so we, we did work. We did long course work, uh, which, which obviously gives you the confidence boost when you're about to taper down. Like it wasn't like a six weeks of, oh yeah, just like four Ks, you know? So. When, do you think the fans were like thinking that, Hey, everybody's just on a five week taper over there. Do you think that was, uh, do you think people actually thought outside the bubble that they're, that they're doing hard training in the That's bubble? What- that's what I thought. And then I started talking yeah. to people and they're, and they're like, no, 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 we're doing long course most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're hitting like six or seven K and I'm like, what? Yeah. So, are you so, like, you know, and, and people were saying like, oh, they wanted to still hit long course, you know, cause obviously you have Olympics and you have trials meets coming up. Like, are mm-hmm. you someone who felt like they needed that in the six weeks or are you someone who's like, really we're doing long course right now you know i i liked it and i didn't mind it because the first long course that we got all season before isl was the monday before we left for isl that pool opened up for us post grads in georgia so i was like yeah i don't mind it and i also like to do like after a meet like doing long course to me is like nicer on the legs not as many walls so i really didn't mind that um and then when it came down to it last like I want to say maybe it was like last six days. So like going into the semi and going to the, going into the final, we did not have long course available. So they changed the long course pool into short course. So then it was all just like firing off short course. So I didn't mind it because again, I think we had a pretty good idea that we were going to make it into the semis, you know? So it was like, just do the work and then you can get some rest. And I asked Jack, I was like, you think you can, I think I can shave and can you give me some rest before the final? He's like, yeah, all right, we'll do it. And so that was great. Uh, so I didn't mind it. Uh, yeah. Less walls in between matches like that is, is better. I think. So that's an interesting insight. It, you know, again, not something as a non swimmer, I would normally think about, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Right. Um, I just thought you guys were tapering the whole time. Just one, yeah. just one easy party <laughs> and, and just we'll sprint just group. <laughs> Okay, no, wait, so, wait, 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 we got to hold this right here. <laughs> yeah, we know like, that there were some people that mm-hmm. were on a five week taper. No, I oh, guarantee no, somebody you. was, somebody no, was on, on my, on my mama, nobody on Cali Condors was on a five week taper because we just got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that another interesting point is that mm. match number four on week five i think whenever whenever match four was right you guys were in right yeah you were in the semifinal, and we saw london say like okay we're resting load management we're not putting a lot of stock into this and uh and then we we and then we heard cali have a decidedly different approach take take me take me through that (laughs) okay who'd you hear that from (laughs) (laughs) uh I don't, I, I don't remember, but you know, they were yeah. like, we want to win. <laughs> right. We prided ourselves so hard on wanting to be undefeated all season. And I had seen, cause I spoke with a f- confidant on London roar that some people were being benched and some people were resting. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like that is literally, nah, I don't want to say. No, I don't want to say, but you know, we had a team, (laughs) we had a team meeting where we got, we got a lineup and, um, some people were going to get a little rest here or there, which with all due respect, you know, not every summer is the same. If you want rest, take it right. Like, so you could be ready for the final hundred percent, but the overall like energy in that meeting was no, let's do it just how we've been doing it because what's been happening has been working. And we want to, like I said, come away undefeated. So that is we just wanted to you know go for it and i think at that point it had kind of turned into this like mental game where we were like if we can go for it and not need to rest certain people that might speak louder to other teams than oh are they resting you know it's like you can just do it uh back to back to back so that's kind of what we wanted i think 
And so then I want to get a little more into the culture. You know, you had Jason Lezak as the GM, you had John T as your head coach. Uh, you know, there was uh, uh, towards the semis and the finals, you saw all these Cowley Condors posting, you know, LFG, which you can Google that if you don't know what it means. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like the, the, you, could t- you could tell there was a, a pointed goal. You could tell there was that that yes. uh, that goal in mind you know take me through your leaders and how they kind of, how that trickled down to the rest of the team oh my i mean it it was the perfect season everything lined up so well everyone's mindset like i said earlier was the same we i mean we all just grew the belief i think it just coming out that first match and then just firing off match after match after match i mean i think we really knew that something special could happen and to have jason lezak arguably the greatest really swimmer of all time come to us sit us down for a meeting before the finals i mean i wish you guys were a fly on the wall during that meeting because it was electric i my eyes were glued to the guy so much that i think i forgot to blink my eyes were getting dry dry like that it was really special. We had incredible leaders on the team. Everyone was a leader in their own right because, like I said, we all had the same mindset um, to just get the job done. And um, it's it's funny because I spoke to uh, I had a conversation with uh, Blake Pironi and Chad, and we were like, "All right, so you know what's going to happen here, you guys? You guys are excited, whatever." And at that point, I hadn't even seen Blake because Toronto Titans and us never uh, matched up but once. And so we're talking, we're like, yeah, you know, what's going to happen? You know, we're just like kind of trash talking a little bit. And I I was saying, I was like, dude, your roster is stacked to chat about energy standard. I was like, your roster is the roster. You guys have Olympic gold medalists, world champions, more than any other team. You guys have the superstars. And he looks at me and he's like, you guys have the superstars. I'm like, it, I'm like looking around. I'm like, did anybody hear this guy? Of course, you know, all due respect, Chad, thank you so much, you know, for saying that very kind of you. But we're looking at energy like they have the most international experience, the most Olympic experience, the most world championship experience. So that is what is so incredible for me to come away from to say that we perhaps didn't have the most international experience, Olympic world championship experience on our team. And yet we still were able to fire off like we did because I think our belief was just so strong. Our leadership was so strong. And that's just uh, like, that speaks so loudly to me because to want to see all of your teammates succeed as much as you want to see yourself succeed is money. I mean, that is that's what makes a championship team successful. Um, that's how uh, 2016 was. I mean, it was just momentum after momentum. It just kept it rolling. You know, you felt the emotion you wanted to be successful like your teammates were. And, and that is, uh, was really cool this season. So on that note, was there anyone on the team, maybe out, outside the pool, in the pool that surprised, you know, like you said, you guys had superstars, you know, obviously you have yourself, Caleb Dressel, Lily King, you know, the, these people who've performed on a big stage multiple times. Who surprised you in the pool, outside the pool? Who who was like, oh, like yeah, this is this is a really good asset that I didn't expect. Yes, so I I think I expected the most from each person. So my expectations were high for everybody because they wouldn't be on Cali Condors if if not. And so you know my expectations were high for myself. They were high for my teammates. Um, Justin Ress came out swinging, incredible performance. Him um, individually and relay like, and he's like funny too. So, yeah. I mean, we had such a blast in the ready room, especially during those mixed relays. Cause we got to have the boys with us. Um, that was really just so fun. So he definitely stood out to me. Coleman Stewart also rookie of Cali condors came out like cool. His underwaters are crazy. I mean, I swear he like builds his hundreds or something. And um, Bita Nelson also loved racing against her, loved her energy. She fired up the team with a little uh, story herself. That, like I said, we had, you had Caleb and I as captains, co-captains, but we had a lot of people stepping up and speaking up because they wanted to step into those shoes as well. Because like I said, team, it was just all about team. So Bita had fired us up in a meeting with, 
you know, something along the lines of swimming for something greater than yourself individually, you know, just, just beautiful energy. And, um, who else? I mean, everyone, I, what I really respect out of someone, um, apart from their competitive, um, drive and energy and intensity is how they train. And so we had Sheridan train with the Georgia group and she was with me every single day. And I was like, you got to come down to Georgia and train with us because (laughs) I mean, she was incredible. And so I just love that. Everyone was just working hard and we all had a good time. Everyone was close and everyone was just friends, which is like, I'm not going to say that you don't get that often, but from people with from all over the country and even the, we had international swimmers on our team, you really don't get that often. So that was like really, really awesome <clears throat> for sure. Am I, am, do, I get, do I get in on this Coleman? Do you have something? I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, you can push off on my questions, but I have to yeah. ask. So yeah. there was, this was, this was like this oasis, this mm-hmm. moment in time was the oasis in swim entertainment Mm-hmm. People needed it to feed their soul. It was so positive. <laughs> no, they did. I mean, we we, we mm-hmm. yeah. did so badly after after such a horrific, oh yes, crappy year. Yeah. And uh, so fans, you know, fans tuned in and they were very excited. There was the the, the was it the the French GM for Energy Standard left, oh. and then that was like a negative story. And like we got to report it. it. It happened. It's news. You made a statement. Okay. Did you guys feel anything internally? Did you guys, or was it like, what was it like in the bubble? Were you, were you it, paying attention? It was really, so someone had brought that to my attention. Literally, I think it was the morning after a match or something, or like the morning after a day off or something. And so I was at breakfast and I'm like, did you hear? And so I'm like looking at this and, you know, with all due respect, I was tired. So I'm literally, I'm just reading this article and I kind of like scroll through. I was like, can you just give me the gist of what happened? And he said such and such about energy standard or whatever. And it kind of rolled off everyone's backs. In my opinion, I didn't really feel anything from energy standard. I didn't feel anything from their GMs. Like I said, I don't think a lot of people even focused on that because we had a job to do. Um, but I can go back and read it now because I really don't know exactly, you know, specifics of, uh, everything said, but, um, it's unfortunate, you know, uh, in, in these trying times. And like you said, this year, emotions are high for several reasons. There's a lot of stress and there's a lot of, you know, anxiety about a lot of things. So I'm not surprised that something like this happened because people are, are, are probably going to, maybe break one way or another, bigger, smaller than others, you know, it, so, you know, it it is what it is, but it really, nobody talked about it, but that morning at breakfast, I read it. It wasn't even brought up again. Yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like you guys are so focused on competing and winning and, and just living in the space of swim that it rolled off your back. I can tell you on our side, it was like, you know, the, the perception I think from, from fans and the audience was, wow, they're pulling this off during a pandemic. Yeah. And this is a big deal. So when this news came out, it was sort of like a sharp or a flat note and a great song. Yeah. So I can sum it up for you. You don't have to read it. Yeah. And I, and I don't want to throw this person under the bus because I don't know them, but it came across a little bit like spoiled milk. Like, yeah. wah. Yes. And- yeah. So, so to get that kind of energy from it, it's like, okay, you know what? Attentions are high. Emotions are high. So I... I feel for you. I'm sorry that this is, you know, the perception that you got from it because my perception of the ISL is something so great and something that really brought the swimming community together in a time where we haven't had meets in literally, what was it? Six, eight months or something like that. So although I do, you know, feel for, feel for them, uh, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, it really wasn't on our mind. We're, we're down under 10 minutes. So we need to ask you the most yeah. important question of all. We know that, that your team pulled together $1.4 million. And I'm, I know oh. that you just split that between you and the captain, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes. It was. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. That was, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that, that's cool. a really big number. It is a big number. We are very thankful to Constantine and the ISL. Uh, it is awesome. Um, you know, Somebody asked me uh, in a, in another like Zoom, 
you know, oh, the finances of this are, are, are incredible for swimmers. And they are, especially in this year where um, we hadn't seen a meet um, or had the opportunity to compete and, you know, reap the rewards, not only in medals, et cetera. It's great. But it also, you know, now like I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I would have taken this opportunity if it were less, if it were, you know, anything other than because it was, I miss it. I'm like sitting here. I'm like, damn, you know, I would think that I would like go crazy six weeks sitting in the same hotel, but it was an incredible experience. All right. So let's, let's get into that final. Um, you know, I don't think you guys were ever behind maybe like after the first event or two, but once you guys got rolling, the train never stopped. What, What were the highlights of those two days for you? So we can, we can fire it off with Mr. Dressel breaking a world record in the first event, slapping the water. I mean, we were going crazy in our team area behind cause we have, we had a obviously TV monitors, um, in our team areas and saw me when that was fired off. And let me, let me little, like, let me rewind just a, a beat when Kelsey swam the hundred fly winning just until her last, just long finish on just a long finish. I was like, we got this, you know, because she came out, fired it off. Then Caleb, then onto, uh, then onto the 200 back, right? Beta. It was beat up, fired it off. I literally didn't even see her time because the times don't come up on the monitors. It's just places. And so I'm like, damn, nice. And she's like, you know, it was uh, really, like I said, the energy was so great because we were just like, we knew we were capable to do something great. Everyone individually knew that because of the belief within each other. Um, then, uh, God, I mean, it, yeah, it was just momentum after momentum. I mean, when we started with the, those first two, three events, um, we, it was, it was incredible. After the first day, you know, we're all like walking out of the floor with a really big smile on our face. We're like, Oh shit. And, um, you know, we were, we were really excited, but we knew we had another day to go. We knew the job that we had to do. So we didn't get too excited, but we definitely felt good here, here. We felt, uh, really good. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was awesome. Then that medley relay was really cool too. Um, because then it was like, I remember finishing backstroke and I was like, let's go because I had touched and, um, ahead. And I was like, this is it. Like if I, if, if there can be good momentum going to the second, third, fourth legs, and we can spread that energy to the other lanes that are around us, to the other teams, they're going to know we're here. They're going to know that uh, we get to choose skins and it's, you guys got to really work hard uh, for that the second day. So um, that, that felt good for sure. With all due respect, God, I don't want to be too like, yeah, (laughs) fuck. No, it was nothing like that, obviously. But of course you get so competitive in it. And no one in the, no one in the stands, no one in the stands. You're like doing this. You're like putting on a show for who, you know? (laughs) And so uh, that was really, really special because, and that's just a testament to the, to the atmosphere that ISL has. I mean, you, you do it without anyone in the stands and, and it's all for the team. So it was really cool. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm back in here. <laughs> Let's talk about this 1.4 million. Oh my God, this million. guy. Hey, it's big. It's 1.4 million. I just want to tell you, as, as somebody who's old and was on the national team, if someone had said this to me years and years ago, I was on the national team for 10 years. If someone had said this to me, I'd have been like, what? That'll yeah. never happen. Are you Ooh. kidding me? Mm-hmm. You dream that it might happen. But it's um, it's exciting to see we've always, the experience you're talking about, everybody's had a taste of that with the NC2A, with at the at collegiate level, but yeah. to see this on a professional level and to hear your enthusiasm, it's, uh, it's like a religious experience. Yeah. So here's the thing, you're home, you're decompressing, you're with, you're, you're with your family, we're going to do Thanksgiving, this is going to drop tomorrow while you're eating turkey. <laughs> um, you know what it's it's a you know what is your is your feeling are you like are you are you is your mind drifting to season three yeah so i i just spoke to jack yesterday um because so in illinois uh 
everything really got shut down. The high schools got shut down. So we, so I had to get a, a membership at Lifetime Fitness to get a plane. Um, so I did a little 4K yesterday. I talked to Jack. I'm like, so, you know, what, what's the plan this week? He gave me a little workout today. And I was like, okay, you want me to swim on Thursday? He's like, no, 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 take a, take a break. I was like, okay, so should I make that up on Sunday? He's like, no, reset your mind, get ready to come back and train. So although, and this is the expression that I used with him. I was like, yeah, you know, it's uh, after a meet like this, where you feel like emotion, you would, you would feel emotionally drained. I was like, wow, we did so well. And it was firing me up for what's to come next. Yes. Season three, but in the nearer future, it's, it's those pro series that we have that are long course it's trials of course, and it's Tokyo. So I'm talking to him and what I say, I was like, um, I'm, uh, was like gnawing at the, or chomping at, I'm chomping at the bit or what is it? Whatever the, the saying is. And I have, uh, just a handful of those experiences. So very few. Um, and that is what it, that is what just makes swimming in this type of environment so cool because it just makes you want to get better. It makes you want to come back and, um, we want the exact same team going into season three. You know what I mean? You know, it, so although we were able to take a beat um, and relax for a moment, tomorrow we'll relax and it's the holidays. My mind is on what's next, uh, which, which really is an amazing feeling to have uh, for me. So, yeah. Sounds a little bit like hope. So we want to say this, John Mix, founder and CEO <laughs> of Finise. We love you, buddy. Love you. We love you. John, John, one more time. We love you. We, <laughs> we want it. Just in case you listened all the way to the end, we love you. Mm. Go to finiswim.com, finiswim.com. We are talking to Olivia Maliga, Finis athlete, international league swimming star. And, you know, you get 30 seconds left. Are there any parting thoughts? Uh, go Doors. Ray, uh, now new season two champions. Thank you guys for following along. Thank you guys for all your support. You really feel the love uh, during this season for, for the squad right here. Um, and it was great. So thank you guys for having me and happy Thanksgiving. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.